And now this, Fox has obtained these satellite images that you're looking at on the screen that show China built mock-ups of U.S. warships. KT McFarland joins us now. KT, good to see you. We know that China has boosted their, their military capacity in recent years. How worried should we be about these images of mock-up uh, U.S. warships? Uh, Lauren, we should be worried for two reasons. One, mm -hmm. it's clear that the Chinese are rebuilding their military capability. They're building new nuclear weapons. They just tested hypersonic weapons. As we can see from the pictures that you're just showing now, they've got mock-up in the desert of American aircraft carriers, and they're, try they're practicing how they're going to destroy American aircraft carriers in the South China Sea. So we should be really upset about the Chinese military buildup. But we should also be upset about our own military. You know, the woke generals and the admirals, they, have, they are losing America's warfighting capability because they're so worried about the culture wars. You know, even internal reports um, and studies, for example, of the United States Navy say, well, our warfighting capability, our ability to, to survive and to, and to defeat China, China in a, any kind of military engagement in the South China Sea, that's in question. That's in jeopardy. Almost all of the sort of military tabletop exercises we do where we're fighting with China in the South China Sea or there's a military engagement, we're not winning those. And why? It's because their own military is saying internally that the focus on political correctness, on the culture wars, on which pronouns to use, means something's falling out of the bottom of, of their training. And what's falling out of the bottom? War fighting. And is the big problem. Is anyone going to change that anytime soon? And right now it looks like the answer is no. Meanwhile, speaking of China, President Xi, he hasn't left uh, China in over 21 months. Um, why? Okay, so I've got a different theory than a lot of experts. So some people are saying, well, it's because he's worried about COVID. Other people are saying, well, it's because he can't leave home because he's worried about an internal Chinese problem with his own political adversaries, not that there are any left in China. I think it's a third reason. I think it's because why bother? You know, China has for 5,000 years seen itself as the center of the universe. They think they've had a crummy 200 years when the United States and Europe and others surpassed them technologically. But they think we're back now. China's back. America's on inevitable decline. They talk about Joe Biden as a failed American president, American dysfunction politically. And they, they're looking at the world and saying, look, we're not going to go to these international conferences and be treated as one of many. We're not one of many. We're China. We're China. We're the head of the world. And so you want to talk to us? Come to us. And you can do what foreigners have done, barbarians have done for thousands of years. You come to see the Chinese emperor, you put your forehead to the floor, it's called kowtow, and you offer tribute. That's their new plan. Not a great one and not a good look for a very enfeebled looking Joe Biden. Yeah, and, and very emboldened President Xi, on the contrary, yeah. right? And he's looking at what could be an unprecedented third term. Yeah, and that's why I'm concerned that what happens in China now and in the South China Sea, the Chinese are going to look to make some kind of a move to show how powerful he is against the United States. Oh. I'm thinking that maybe as soon as March, any time after March, we could see some kind of a move against Taiwan. The why same do you say way we March? saw against Hong Kong. Why March, Katie? Well, because in February, yeah. it's March because in February are the Beijing Olympics. Mm. And China wants us to go really well. They want to show the world that they're really the, the leading power of the world. The same way a decade ago, Vladimir Putin had the, the Russian Olympics have um, a great success for Russia and immediately afterwards made a move in the Baltics against Ukraine and against Georgia. So I think what the Chinese are doing is they're looking at this. They want their Olympics to be great. And any time after March... It's when they could start making a move. Now, I don't think they're going to invade Taiwan. They've already shown they could do it and succeed. I think what they'll do is some kind of a cyber attack, perhaps an economic attack, perhaps an economic blockade. They have that window of opportunity yeah. between the end of the Olympics and the end of the Biden rule. And I think they're going to make their move now while they think they have a weak, distracted, dysfunctional Washington. You are painting a very scary picture of a very mighty adversary yeah. that the U.S. has in China. One final one for you, KT. Former President Donald Trump thinks the Chinese might take over Bagram Air Force Base. And that's what President Trump said exclusively to Fox News. And I'm going to quote right here for you. You're looking at it on the sc uh, screen. We would have kept Bagram because it is next to China and it is one hour away from their nuclear facility. And we gave that up, too. And now China is going to take over Bagram, in my opinion. What is your opinion, KT? 
I think he's 100% right. It's a, we built that base. It's hundreds of, we took tens of billions of dollars to build that base. It has state-of-the-art facilities, housing, medical, mess halls, conference rooms, and very sophisticated, long, multiple um, airstrips. The Chinese are going to move right in there, and they're going to use it as their launch pad to create a whole new industry for them. They've always eyed Afghanistan's rare earth minerals, and I think they're going to use that as the way to get those rare earth minerals out of Afghanistan and into China. And what can the U.S. do to push back against an aggressive China right now? What can we do that President Biden is not doing? Well, I think you could do a whole bunch of things. One, you could rebuild the American military, but, but most importantly, technology. We're not spending, we're spending half of, on technology development that we spent, say, for example, in the Reagan administration. Yeah. We should increase our research and development in high technology. We should regain the lead in a number of these technologies of the future and then keep the secrets ourselves. Don't let the Chinese steal them. And then finally, and most importantly, we have allies. The Chinese says that they have vassals. So what we need to do is have a strong alliance, economic as well as military, with our allies in the Pacific region. Yeah, to take on China together. But KT, we are spending a lot of money. But it's here at home on, like, equitable trees, tree equity, right? And things like that, stuffed into the, uh, yeah. the spending bill. Yeah, culture wars. We're... We're, we're wasting the money is what we're doing, and the Chinese are laughing at us because what are they spending their money on? Artificial intelligence, hypersonic yeah. weapons, economic technologies, 5G communications. Us? Hmm, I'm not quite so sure. I guess yeah. the Republicans who jumped on that clown car that went off the cliff to support the Biden bill, I think they have a lot to answer for. KT, thank you for the time.